Hello everyone, uh, I hope you all had a nice long weekend. Uh, I'm recording this on Wednesday. I'm a little late this week. Uh, I, know I would have liked to have gotten this done yesterday, but uh, some personal things precluded that from happening. Um, today is the, uh, I believe today is the official Columbus Day. Uh, and uh, it's also a Jewish holiday. Uh, it was 31 degrees yesterday morning in Poughkeepsie. Uh, so it's time to break out the long sleeves. Dr. Tom has his long sleeves on and I will not be getting rid of them until sometime in April. Um, <clears throat> sadly, I have some sad news to report. Uh, the reign of Big Poppy ended on Monday night. Um, he will not win another World Series for the Red Sox. Uh, the good news is that Tom Brady has been paroled. Uh, he's out back on the street, and he's playing with a vengeance. Go Pats. Okay, a little housekeeping. Um, I'm very pleased with the favorite intervention discussion board. I love this discussion board because not only do I get to uh, see all of you and hear you talk and uh, uh, but I get to uh, learn about uh, many interventions that I, that I have not. I, I couldn't possibly have learned all the interventions on all three of these websites. So uh, it's very exciting for me to watch you, interact with you. And I'm also excited about the way you interacted with each other. Some of you added new websites. Uh, so it was uh, pretty neat stuff. Um, and I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Um, uh, many of you were adding web links, and I just wanted to take a minute now to show you how to take your web link and make it live. Like, I'm going to use Gina here. I hope you don't mind, Gina, that I use you. And I'm going to go down here and edit. Um, all of you can do this. All of you can edit your posts. So I'm going to go down and edit. And now I'm, I'm going to... Uh, Copy, Control C. Uh, I'm going to copy that uh, URL. I'm going to go to this link icon here. I'm going to click on that link icon. If I've done, if I've explained this before, those of you who've watched it, please excuse me. You can skip ahead. <laughs> uh, I'm going to do Control V. That will paste it into the link path box here. Now I'm going to hit this drop down box that says open in a new window. I like to open in a new window because it takes you out of Blackboard and you can just go back to uh, the, you can hit the task bar up here and go back to your, um, your to Blackboard without uh, having hit the back button and messing it up. So you can see here now that it's live, I'm going to hit submit and, and you now I can just click on that. Which is, which is much better. It's going to take me out of Blackboard. It's going to, going to go right into YouTube, or actually this is TeacherTube. Uh, I'm not a great fan of TeacherTube, um, and I'll tell you why by just um, looking at um, all these ads. Uh, I'm not sure if an ad is going to come up uh, before I even play this. You can see that it's just... Um, overwhelming with um, with ads everywhere and so I'm not a fan I know in order to make it free uh, that teacher tube has to get these ads um, uh, I don't know why they don't run it like YouTube um, but they don't <laughs> um, so so that's how you would uh, add a, a live link to your um, to your discussion board post. Um, I've graded a few of the DEJs on response to intervention and I've got one major piece of feedback. When you react to a quote, I want to hear your voice uh, and what I typically see on the first group of double entry journals and that's why I don't weight them as much as I do the later ones uh, is that people are note taking. Oh, this is what uh, Cohen and Spencer said. This is what Fisher and Fry said, 
uh, and, and, and even when you connect, you cut and paste quotes, which please avoid that. Um, that is not what I'm looking for. I'm looking to see what's in your head. What does this make you think? So I want you to have a conversation with the text. I want to hear your voice. Uh, and a strong voice means you're making connections to yourself personally. Uh, this, this material reminds me of when I was a student and blah, blah, blah. This reminds me of the Cohen and Spencer chapter where they said something about, but you don't quote it. You say where they mentioned um, the, and they talked about, they wrote about charting the RTI process. And I really believe this is a great thing. So here comes the opinion. And I believe this is a great way to make, to let students see their progress and how they're, they're catching up to their fellow students. So that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for your voice, your opinion, um, strong opinions, deep connections, uh, rather than just cutting and pasting quotes. I mean, please, cutting and pasting quotes tells me nothing. It means, okay, you know how to cut and paste a quote. Uh, okay, yeah, it's similar to what you're reacting to, but it doesn't tell me what you're thinking. So that's what I'm looking for. Also remember to, to connect to my presentation. Uh, uh, many of the, uh, uh, the DEJs that I've seen so far have done that, which I'm excited about, because in my presentations, I let you know what I think are the big ideas. And, it would, and if you want some advice, I would react to those things. <laughs> um, uh, or you can find some, some or you can add some ideas of your own. But one of the things that I, that I really talked about was curriculum-based measurement, charting progress, and you, you know, I'm mentioning it again. And when I go through the double entry journals, very few of you talk about the examples that were given in both Cohen and Spencer and Fisher and Fry of the students and how, how RTI actually worked with them, how that this intervention uh, kind of flatlined, the student wasn't catching up to their peers. Um, so they did another intervention within six to eight weeks. Uh, so you're not really wasting a lot of time um, to see if your intervention is working. And in order for it to be working, it has to be catching that student up to that, to that learning, that baseline, that graph where the average student is progress is, is leading to. So you, here's the graph of the average student and your graph has to go up. So by the end of the, the semester or the end of whenever you're charting, you're catching up. So those are some uh, things that I, I noticed right off the bat. Um, um, I, I'm going to talk about the favorite intervention. I'm not going to mention anybody in particular, but um, as I said, it's one of my, one of my favorite uh, topics because I get to see you and I get to see um, I get to see a lot of different interventions, many of which I haven't seen before. Um, so um, uh, kudos to all of you for uh, doing that. Um, I'm impressed, as I said, I was impressed with the quality of the interventions. Um, my goal is that you will be exposed to a vast array of research-based interventions because my biggest complaint about response to intervention is that it's just another uh, synonym for remediation. And what? Okay, we're going to have a um, we're going to have a response TI meeting, and all that happens is the student is sent to a uh, a, a room to do uh, a resource room or sent to uh, a reading room and it's just remediation there there nobody mentions an intervention nobody's talking about how long this is going to last and nobody's talking about how we're going to chart progress and what kind of cbm or what kind of probe are we going to use to 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 measure progress so that's what rti is about uh, and unfortunately for many districts it's just another uh, name for remediation um, so uh, as you can see not all the inter all the resources on intervention central are research based you can tell when it's when uh, Jim Wright uses uh, references at the bottom so those are the, he's citing the research that uh, supports that intervention uh, and and everything on the clearinghouse the um, what works clearinghouse everything on there is uh, research based that's a government website they will not accept it unless there is uh, peer-reviewed research that supports that intervention so um, that's where you'll see a lot of uh, large interventions like um, reading programs 
uh, et cetera, et cetera, that districts will use uh, as their core instruction. You, you remember that part of research, uh, part, part of response to intervention is using research-based core instruction. So um, that's uh, what works Clearinghouse. And I'm not as familiar with um, Intervention Hero, uh, but uh, I'm sure most of those are research-based as well. Okay, so we're moving into the uh, standardized assessment portion of the course. We we're moving away from the special ed uh, assessment part uh, and, uh, and the learning targets for this, 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 these next few parts are what I call the dry parts of assessment, but they're absolutely necessary. Um, the first learning target is so you, you, that you'll be able to define key vocabulary words associ associated with the standardized testing process. Um, words like uh, standard er error of measurement and validity and um, reliability and absence of bias. Um, to accurately describe the difference between a norm referenced and a criterion reference test. And there is a big difference. And many of you uh, just lump the two together. Oh, I'm, oh, our state assessments, they just compare kids against uh, other kids the, the same way. And that's not true. They do not compare kids they, uh, who have already taken the test. A norm reference test does that. Um, also to be in, able to intelligently discuss the intricacies of creating large scale standardized tests. It's in, that's why I do this discussion board. That's why I do this unit so that you will understand the care, the time, the, in the, in the, the technical aspect of creating a large scale standardized test. So when you're in the, in your faculty room complaining about them, um, and saying that these are biased against poor kids, and I come up and say, "You, oh yeah, what evidence do you have of that?" And you'll you'll lay on me the old caboose thing. Oh, well, there was a test question about a caboose. Being, that that was long time ago. You'll never see a question about a caboose anymore because, um, for one thing, they don't use cabooses anymore. So um, make sure you know what you're talking about if you're going to argue for and against uh, the use of standardized uh, testing. And to summarize the perspective common core assessments that are funded by the federal government. Um, there's been some movement away from those assessments, but I think it's still worth talking about um, PARC and the other assessments that, that uh, are, cre are created, the common, the common common core assessments. Okay, in the next several sessions, we'll be exploring the intricacies, as I said, of creating large-scale tests. Um, we'll talk about validity, reliability, absence of bias. Um, and, and you will, um, I had a colleague of mine who was a high school social studies teacher complain on social media that snow, day, snow days were affecting the validity of the Regents exams. So maybe someone can tell me what's wrong with that statement in the coming weeks. Um, and um, I would hope you all would be able to tell me what's wrong with that. All right, let's talk about assignments. Uh, I'll go into the assignments. Uh, uh, this is, uh, I'll hit the coursework by week folder. I'll go into session four. And you have um, actually two assignments. Uh, and you up, you're going to upload your initial post. You have a harder than the Dickens uh, discussion board that closes on November 6th. So you have four weeks. Uh, to complete that. So if any of you are complaining that you can't make six posts in uh, four weeks, um, shame on you. That's uh, one and a quarter posts per week. <laughs> um, you have a quiz on norms and test scores. Now, as I mentioned, I think I mentioned this. Uh, I'm not, maybe I did mention it in the last uh, teaching memo. But when you do a quiz, I always have a hard copy of the in the handouts, um, there's the vocabulary in your own words, which I, I posted that in the first four. So those of you that um, don't wait until the last minute, you'll say, oh, how come we weren't told about this before? <laughs> um, this is the hard copy of uh, Norms and Test Scores quiz. So I would take it, I would download the hard copy first, go over here to, on the right and download it. Uh, you can see that it's all multiple choice. It's 10 multiple choice questions. 
Uh, and, um, and if you have a problem, like someone already posted on the quiz discussion board and asked a question about um, uh, something, what was it, uh, the, normative, the normative sample and the norm sample. Um, so you'll find that in either Cohen and Spencer's chapter or uh, Popham's chapter 12. Uh, about um, large-scale standard, about norms and test scores. Uh, so that's where you will find that. Um, so that's what I would recommend. Uh, there's the hard copy as usual. Here are the um, a lot of the um, ancillary materials that you can connect to. Um, if you're going to bash standardized tech testing, I would go onto this website, the pros and cons of standardized testing. Uh, and many of you will use this discussion board to do that. And I will call you out if you are, if you are not providing evidence. And uh, I'm talking to a lot of you middle and high school teachers that have, have traditionally bashed either the Regents exams or the, uh, in the middle school, the 6th, 7th, and 8th grade ELA and math tests. Um, so this will give you some information as to what is what is wrong and right with large-scale tests and you will be much more able to challenge your friends in the faculty room <laughs> but you'll be able to do it intelligently okay um so oh yeah that's, i was talking about the assignments i i let i digress <laughs> um i will go back to the assignment so doing the the test uh and there is a, qu a quiz discussion board where you can go and discuss it. So actually you have three opportunities to discuss, or actually two opportunities to discuss the test before you take it a third time. Um, and, but many of you will not listen to my advice. Many of you won't even watch this video, and that's fine. <laughs> you do not hurt my feelings. Um, but those of you who do will be able to, to get 100 on these quizzes. Um, so uh, you take the hard copy first, uh, go in and talk about the ones you're not sure of, take the quiz, go back and take the quiz the first time, go back and talk about the ones you got wrong, and then take it a third time, and you should get 100 on all my quizzes, um, except the true-false quizzes, of course, because I only give those ones. So you have a quiz on norms and test scores, which you'll uh, learn about in chapter six here, developing technical skills. Uh, that's basically what it's on. So it's that quiz is focusing on chapter six of Cohen and Spencer. You also may find some answers in uh, Popham's chapter 12, I believe. Uh, you also have a harder than the Dickens um, uh, discussion board where you're, you'll get to talk about um, um, and you'll, you'll answer these questions in your initial post, but then you'll get to talk about uh, large-scale testing, what you think is right, what you think is wrong, uh, and using evidence uh, from, our, from articles uh, in course materials to support your answers. So remember, four of your response posts have to have citations to the material in order to get uh, distinguished in that category. If you want advanced in that category, um, you have to reference five, um, you have to have citations in five posts uh, of your of your five or your ten posts. So keep that in mind. Um, that is, I believe that is it. Um, I thought I had a, let me just check, I thought I had a survey in week four assignments. Let me go into um, 23. I know, I thought I saw one of you did the um, survey. Okay, I'll, I'll check that um, later. But uh, if there is a survey, uh, make sure you take it because I'm that is a survey that goes directly to me and I can get feedback from you. So it, it may be in next week's uh, course week work. I'll just take a quick look to see if it's in um, next week's assignments. Yes. Student, student feedback survey is in next week. So um, that will be next week. Ignore me unless you want to go forward and, and give me feedback early. Uh, so that's it for this week. 
Uh, I will see you in, I, I will try to make another post in a couple of weeks. I, I hate going this long, three weeks without uh, talking to you all. So uh, I'll probably post something in a couple of weeks. So good luck.